Hey! Oh wait, I gotta be spooky. Hey. <laughs> that's not spooky, that's just depressing sounding. Get, get your like... What, what, spooky, what does spooky sound like? Like, hey. Like, that just sounds like, creepy. Think, just channel the haunted mansion, man. When tombstones quake and people shiver, that's the spooky time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't remember what he says. Whatever. Hey, how's it going, you fiends? I'm Demi Bobemi. And I am dead inside. And welcome back to 13 days of spooktacular dead fiend lead fright. Welcome back to the 13 dead days of fiendly fright. Demi got it. <laughs> oh, it should be 13 days of dead, 13 dead and Demi days or dead. Wait, what is it again? Thir 13 dead days of fiendly fright. 13 dead and Demi days of fiendly fright. Because you're reading too. I am. As we found out in the last episode. Holy shit. <laughs> And I, and I also said in the last episode that every episode we're probably going to add something onto it, so. I'm excited to not remember what this is even called by the end of it. We'll write it down. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we both just shake our heads. So 13 dead and demi days of fiendly fright. Oh, yeah. Sound? I mean, I like dead days because it's uh, like. Dead days. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, Halloween. Dead days of uh, fiendly fright with Demi Bobemi. Featuring Demi Bobemi. Featuring, <laughs> starring. Guest starring. Featuring, <laughs> co hosted, <laughs> co produced. Oh. Co executive producer, Demi Bobemi. And casting done by Freya. She did a great job. I've, if I could, uh, Say so myself. <laughs> Good job casting, Freya. Okay. Good job. So we're back to me reading today. Yeah. And I'm reading... What am I reading? Just open up to the bookmark. It's one of those days, guys, where I feel extra dead inside. Ooh. I'm going to freak out. Why? Because you're trying to look and find if there's another story <laughs> yeah. other than the one that you're supposed to read to say <laughs> that title. You're supposed to read? Oh, fuck. Yeah. We have a very tight schedule here the poval portrait <laughs> the oval portrait by edgar Allan poe this is only like a page long you picked the shortest one for me to read Dude, she's you... sick of me <laughs> <laughs> well, okay the audacity you were like this one's so long this one's so long just... well yeah because i was looking at like ones like the house of the fall of usher well we're working our way up remember no <laughs> <laughs> okay bird bird you have a bird behind you I, yeah i'm aware my... oh fuck how's my bird he's getting fucked up is he okay i keep stretching and like fucking give him the old one too wow i've been there <clears throat> ready yeah the oval portrait the chateau mm, yes <laughs> fancy <laughs> into which my valet had ventured to make forcible entrance rather than permit me in my desperately wounded condition to pass a night in the open air was one of those piles of commingled doom and grandeur which have so long frowned upon the Apennin, ap Apennines. A-P-P-E-N-N-I-N-E-S. Apennines. Eponines. Eponines. <laughs> hey, Google, how do you pronounce A P P E N N I N E S? So I was right the first time? Eponines. Yeah. So it's not Eponines? Eponines, <laughs> no. Not less, in fact, than in the fancy of Mrs. Radcliffe. That must be Daniel's mom. <laughs> 
Okay, so we complain about Christopher Paolini with his commas, but Edgar Allan Poe <laughs> definitely really likes his commas. In that first sentence, are you ready for this? Oh yeah, tell me if we can give it to me. In that first sentence, there was six or seven commas, and there was no list. <laughs> That's a lot of commas. <sighs> to all appearance, it had been temporarily and very lately abandoned. Wait, what's, what was abandoned? His fucking chateau. Oh, okay. He's been staying out all night drinking in the gutter. Okay. Just making sure we're on the same page. Okay. You <laughs> passed the test. <laughs> we established ourselves in one of the smallest and least sumptuously furnished apartments. It lay in a remote turret of the building. Its decorations were rich, yet tattered and antique. Its walls were hung with tapestry and bedecked with manifold and multi-form armorial trophies, together with an unusually great number of very spirited modern paintings and frames of rich golden arabesque. 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 You were uh, right the first time. Really? Mm -hmm. Fucking, I'm nailing this. Dude. Been, been doing this for like four years. I'm <laughs> nailing it now. Finally catching on. <laughs> Finally learning to read. <laughs> In these paintings, which depended from the walls not only in their main surfaces, but in very many nooks, which the bizarre architecture of the chateau rendered necessary, in these paintings, my incipient, incipient delirium perhaps had caused me to take deep interest so that I bade Pedro to close the heavy shutters of the room, since it was already night, to light the tongues of a tall candle candelabrum which stood by the head of my bed and to throw open far and wide the fringe curtains of black velvet which enveloped the bed itself i wished all this done that i might resign myself if not to sleep at least alternately to the contemplation of these pictures and the perusal of a small volume which had been found upon the pillow and which purported to criticize and describe them i want velvet curtains now like down here just everywhere just a <sighs> just a house filled with velvet curtains we have dogs though it'll attract so much dog hair but that would look cool though having like really heavy velvet i like <laughs> i want to meet <laughs> i don't know i guess i just kind of imagine this being like the haunted mansion a little bit but like fancy like the fancy, like the haunted mansion before it wasn't fancy or dilapidated. Yeah, all the little nooks that have the heads in them that watch you. Does Ooh. it? You know what I mean? Like that's the vibe I'm getting. Long, long I read, and devoutly, devotedly I gazed. Rapidly and gloriously the hours flew by, and the deep midnight came. The position of the candelabrum displeased me, and outreaching my hand with difficulty. Rather than disturb my slumbering valet, I placed it so as to throw its rays more fully upon the book. But the action produced an effort altogether unanticipated. The rays of the numerous candles, for there were many, now fell within a niche of the room, which had hitherto been thrown into deep shade by one of the bedposts. I thus saw, in vivid light, a picture all unnoticed before. It was the portrait of a young girl, just ripening into womanhood. Ew. <laughs> Why say ew? Because Edgar Allan Poe and anything that he says ripening into womanhood, he probably actually means like a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old. Yeah, that like freaks me out. Because like, just leave it at like, like a young woman. Because then I can imagine her being like 20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of 12. I glanced at the painting hurriedly. Hurriedly. Hur hurriedly. Hur hurriedly. Hurriedly. How do you say that word out loud? Hurriedly? 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 Yeah, because you hurried. Hurried. Hurriedly. Like I hurried them up. Hurriedly. That feels weird coming out of my mouth hole. It is like a weird thing to say. Out loud. Yeah. It's fine in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I glanced at the painting hurriedly and then closed my eyes. Why I did this was not at first apparent even to my own perception, but while my lids remained thus shut, I ran over in my mind my reason for so shutting them, 
It was an impulsive moment to gain time for thought, to make sure that my vision had not deceived me, to calm and subdue my fancy for a more sober and more certain gaze. In a few moments, I again looked fixedly at the painting. That I now saw aright, I could not and would not doubt, for the first flashing of the candles upon the canvas had seemed to dissipate the dreamy stupor which was stealing over my senses and to startle me at once into waking life. The portrait, I have already said, was that of a young girl. It was a mere head and shoulders done in what was technically termed a vignette matter, much in the style of the favorite heads of Sully. The arms, the bosom, and even the ends of the radiant hair melted imperceptibly into the vague yet deep shadow which formed the background of the whole. The frame was oval, richly gilded and filigreed with moresque. As a thing of art, nothing could be more admirable than, paint, than the painting itself, but it could have been neither the execution of the work nor the immortal beauty of the countenance, which had so suddenly and so vehemently moved me. Least of all, could it have been that my fancy, shaken from its half-slumber, had mistaken the head for that of a living person? I saw at once the peculiarities of the design, of the veneering, and of the frame, must have instantly dispelled such idea, must have prevented even its momentary entertainment. Thinking earnestly upon these points, I remained, for an hour perhaps, half sitting, half reclining, with my vision riveted upon the portrait. At length, satisfied with the true secret of its effect, I fell back within the bed. I had found the spell of the picture in an absolute lifelikeness of expression, which at first, startling, finally confounded, subdued, and appalled me. With deep and reverent awe, I replaced the candelabrum in its former position, <laughs> this dude's so drunk he got scared by a painting thinking it was real. <laughs> yeah. The cause of my deep agitation being thus shut from view, I saw eagerly the volume which discussed the paintings and their histories, turning to the number of which designated the oval portrait. I there read the vague and quaint words which follow. Um, I was saying like a lot of, or I was going to say, a lot of Edgar Allan Poe poems, he talks about like this weird like mist, like weird head space that he like talks about. And I'm like, mm, that's just him always being drunk. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you're either drunk or you're hungover. Like all of your stories are that. Yeah, either all of your stories are drunk <laughs> or hungover or you like, what the fuck? <laughs> I also love how he basically says, I was so drunk that painting scared me. <laughs> <laughs> like like because what he came home from a party is that what he's saying or just yeah. a night out yeah he just like came out from like being fucking drunk coming home from being fucking shit face drunk i just want to go lay down in my bed and read a book and then, and then he's i got like, scared by this portrait yeah <laughs> then he's like fucking around with the light trying to get it <laughs> right and then it like casts light on this painting and then he's like oh my god you scared me i thought you were a person there was a maiden of rarest beauty, and not more lovely than full of glee, and evil was the hour when she saw, and loved, and wedded the painter. He, passionate, studious, austere, and having already a bride in his art, she a maiden of rarest beauty, and not more lovely than full of glee, all light and smiles, and frolicsome as the young fawn, loving and cherishing all things, hating only the art, which was her rival dreading only the palette and the brushes and other untoward instruments which deprived her of the countenance of her lover. It was thus a terrible thing for this lady to hear the painter speak of his desire to portray even his young bride. But she was humble and obedient and sat meekly for many weeks in the dark high turret, cham high turret chamber where the light dripped upon the pale canvas only from overhead. But he, the painter, took glory in his work which went on from hour to hour and from day to day, and he was a passionate and wild and moody man who became lost in reveries, so that he could not see that the light which fell so ghastly on that lone tur turret withered the health and the spirits of his bride, who pined visibly to all but him. Yet she smiled on and still on, uncomplainingly, because she saw that the painter, 
who had high renown, took a fervid and burning pleasure in his task and wrought day and night to depict her who so loved him, yet who grew daily more dispirited and weak. And in sooth, some who beheld the portrait spoke of its resemblance in low words, as of a mighty marvel, and a proof not less the power of the painter than of his deep love for her whom he depicted so surpassingly well. But at length, as the labor drew nearer to its conclusion, there were admitted none into the turret, for the painter had grown wild with the ardor of his work and turned his eyes from canvas merely even to regard the countenance of his wife, and he would not see that the tints which he had spread upon the canvas were drawn from the tree, the cheeks of those who sat sate beside him. And when many weeks had passed, and but little remained to do, save one brush upon the mouth and one tint upon the eye, the spirit of the lady again flickered up as a flame within the socket of the lamp, and then the brush was given, and then the tint was placed, and for one moment the painter stood entranced before the work which he had wrought, but in the next, while he yet gazed, he grew tremulous and very pallid and aghast, and crying with a loud voice, This is indeed life itself, turned suddenly to regard his beloved. She was dead. He sucked the life out of her into the painting. Oh, I thought he was taking so long to fucking paint her, she died. <laughs> oh, People maybe. really do interpret stories differently. Yeah, because to me, I'm like, oh my god, he like was so passionate about the painting that he literally sucked the life out of her and put it into the painting. That seems like a very like artistic interpretation of what happened, of what transpired, but I'm pretty sure he fucking... Took so long painting her. She died of waiting. I mean, they said it took dog. weeks. Right? I mean, the human lifespan isn't that short. Well, she was just sitting there not eating, not drinking. She withered up and died. She's like, I'm hungry. I'm going to wither up and die. And he's like, one second. Let me get this. Fuck. Well, that's not as, like, fun. It seems a lot more mystical and more fun. If he, you know, every stroke, he was like sapping some of her life. And that's why it was so lifelike. Maybe it was lifelike. Maybe it did actually move. Fuck, dude. I liked that story. Actually, I've never heard that one before. The oval portrait? Yeah. Come on, Demi. What do you mean? Come this on. This is classic as they get. I never, I never heard it either. <laughs> I fucking knew it. You son of a bitch. I think that's why I was reading it the way I was reading it. I was reading it. In a similar way to, you know, like when you're on a trail that you've never been on before and you're like deliberately like trudging through the trail, but you're still like kind of like unsure. Yeah. Because that story is what inspired the portrait of Dorian Gray, right? That's correct. That's a nice little tidbit of information. Which I know I bought the portrait of dorian gray but i just never read it you've bought a lot of books that i just i like i i have good intentions when i buy them that's true we have all the best intentions when you buy a book you just sit on it literally let it collect dust don't make me feel bad about it jesus christ man i'll get rid of it then bye yeah, well, we're on the sailboat you'll read all the books you bought yeah, I'll have a lot of free time, I think. Bet. I, I like that story. I sometimes wonder why people write in ways that they write. Like, why he did the whole setup to the portrait. That he's, like, getting back to his chateau and, like, drunk and then, like, falls into his bed. Like, why he made, like, a whole big deal about it and then talks about the portrait. Why instead he didn't just talk about, like, maybe, like, being drunk in his bed and fixing his light. And then, like, going into, like, more detail about the portrait that way, but... I kind of feel like, why wasn't the story about the painter? Like, why? <laughs> like I kind of feel like that, like... Yeah, because it was, like, this, like, kind of, like, this whole setup, and it seemed like maybe he was going to get, like, fucked up from the painting or something, yeah. or 
but then she it was just, gonna walk out of it or something crazy yeah but then it just talks about like the story of the portrait like the little thing that like the wording or whatever that's on yeah. the portrait and then like ends and it's like oh i'm kind of don't get the point of that <laughs> i'm kind of like i'm really interested now like in the painter and his wife and like that whole story because i feel like you just told me a drunk guy was in bed and got spooked by a painting because <laughs> he's a drunk person. And I'm like, well, tell me about the painting, though, like more like in depth instead of just like once upon a dime, <clears throat> a guy did a painting and it took so long his wife died the end. And I'm like, well, oh, what the heck? I don't think that was Edgar Allan Poe's style, though. I think he really liked to kind of just write down drunken story thoughts. And then <sighs> he was probably drunk when he wrote it, too. Yeah. Um, which actually makes me really excited to like read the portrait of Dorian Gray. Cause I Cause feel it might like be a more fucking, <laughs> yeah, they were like, but I want to hear about the painter. And then they wrote about the painter. I don't actually know what it's like about, about. So I don't know what it's about, about either. <laughs> I mean, like I have no idea. I don't even know like a basic synopsis of what the portrait of Dorian Gray is about. All I know is there's like portraits that are like alive or something. I think it's like. The context I've gathered is that his, like, he's, like, has immortality because his life is, like, trapped within the painting or something. No. Oh. I think, but I don't actually know. I've never looked at, like, a plot synopsis or anything. You don't even know what it's about. No, that's what I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, what about you guys? Have you guys ever read or heard the Oval Portrait before? Or was this the first time for you guys as well? What are your thoughts? Have you guys read Portrait of Dorian Gray? And is there any comparison between the two stories? Let us know in the comment section below. Got anything else to add? I, you just said Edgar Allan Poe, and I was like, he really went by like his whole ass name. Don't you go by your whole ass name? Demi no. Bo Bemi? Well, when you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, lots um, of people go by their full names, right? Did he go by his full name or did they just start saying Edgar Allan Poe? I guess they might have started calling him by his whole last name. Yeah, he might have just gone by Poe. Or Edgar or little Eddie. Or maybe he was like, you know what, call me, um, my first name is Edgar, but I like to go by Ed by like two Ds. <laughs> and so call me Dead Inside. <laughs> Wait. Reincarnated? No. <laughs> no I'm not an alcoholic and I'm not a pedophile those are very solid points <laughs> also for everybody that's doing these 13 dead days of Findlay Fright mm -hmm. with Demi Babemi <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys like watching scary movies Ooh. I think on almost every Monday this month in the discord mm -hmm. we're doing movie night scary movie nights every monday move every monday night it's going to be a scary movie so come join us in the discord if you're not there already and it's fun because we watch together and then we can chat about it it's not voice chat or anything it's just chatting with your fingertips but <laughs> Ew. it's still a good time i just thought of like instead of typing like if your fingers had mouths and they mm, were that's like creepy talking well, thank you everyone so much for watching. Hit that like button if you liked it. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And hopefully we'll see you in the Discord. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheesiest. We're like cheesiest. We're like sleaziest. Oh! So tomorrow we're going to go get more decorations and wake up at a decent hour and do stuff at a decent time. Yeah, I just can't have so many beers again.